Okay, so this seven bucks moment is brought to you by uh, a very good buddy of mine. His name is Jay Glazer. Uh, you know, obviously with Jay, I've known Jay for a very, very long time. And um, and don't worry, I'm stopping at a light now just so I can shoot this uh, because I do not drive dangerously. Uh, fast and furiously, I do. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's always room for cheesy jokes. Uh, but I do want to say this about Jay Glazer. You know, one of the best things about Jay Glazer is that now the light turns green and I go. Uh, the best thing about Jay Glazer is that, you know, he continues to be one of the most motivated individuals I have ever met. And it's so cool, you know, that I could call the guy such a good friend. I call him a brother. Uh, I also call him an asshole. Um, but he is one of the most motivating guys you'll ever be around. But here's the thing, uh, aside from being motivating, aside, uh, aside from him being completely filthy, like all of us, um, the best thing about Jay Glazer is that he's a grateful guy. And when you get around him, guys, you just gotta know, man, I mean, he lives in the world of gratitude. He lives in the spirit of gratitude. Every day he wakes up just grateful for the day and for the breath that he's able to take. Uh, and I think when you live in that space of gratitude, it just allows you to, um, it sets you up to just be happier. And, uh, and that's the way Jay Glazer is. So, um, without any further ado, here is Jay Glazer's seven bucks moment. Enjoy. Hi guys, this is Jay Glazer of the NFL on Fox, UFC on Fox. Ballers! Breakable Performance Center and MMA Athletics. I know DJ just gave his seven bucks moment. Well, now it's time for me to give you guys mine. My seven bucks moment was, and then the day actually, I got my first step inside covering the NFL. For the first 12 years of my career, uh, the most I made was $9,450 a year. It's tough. I was living in New York City in an area I had no business living in because I couldn't afford anything else. I thought I'm tough, I wasn't this tough. Then I was living in an apartment in Manhattan where the refrigerator blocked the bathroom door. I was this poor. So you could never go to the bathroom with shutting the door because the refrigerator's in the way. And then you had to hold the string to keep the light on. And I'm sitting there going, why am I doing this? Because nobody else will. Like I was gonna sit out no matter what, as I said, I would be the last man standing. I was never gonna quit. I was gonna do something that's just not been done before. To this day, look, my best friend in this has always been Michael Strahan. Didn't have enough money to get transportation from New York to Jersey, to Giant Stadium every day and back. So I actually made Michael Strahan drive me back into New York City every single day for like seven years. I owe him about $25,000 in Lincoln Tunnel Fare. I'm walking the New York Giant locker room in 1993, making a whopping $9,000 a year. I honestly looked in there and I said, how can I be different from every other reporter in here? We had all these different award-winning journalists, uh, newspaper, TV, radio, Man, I had everything against me. Really didn't have the same education everybody else did. Back when I started, you were either a newspaper reporter or a TV reporter or a radio guy, and that was it. They decided you can't do anything else and cross over. I crossed over to all of them. Most people, I think, look at it the other way and try and fit in or follow somebody else. I don't. Everything I would do in life would be about relationships, not about the scoop, more about the relationships. And over time, those relationships obviously pay off. First started covering the Giants, and all the guys I had relationships with in the Giants, they called around the rest of the NFL, and suddenly I was the guy everybody was talking to in the NFL. I made this insider business a daily thing, and it was me versus ESPN, one guy, and then two guys, and three guys, and 10 guys, and then NFL Network, it was just me. The moment for me came in 1999. So 10 years after I started my career, I was going for a job at CBS Sports for 50 grand, and finally, it would be a full-time job, though. That's what I was looking for, full-time. I was looking for that stability, security. And my agent called me up and says, hey, you can take a deep breath. You can exhale. You got a job. You got a job? I said, got a job. 50 grand. I'm like, 50 grand? 50 grand. Man. When I got that... 1,003rd phone call from 1,002, turned me down. 1,003, finally said, you got a job. Man, there is nothing like it. When you have, when you have a decade of rejection, there's a lot.
for you to really look inside yourself and find out who you are. And just knowing that, again, quitting really wasn't an option. It's just not my DNA. People get so used to the pain that they know instead of the pain of the unknown. I am actually a big, I'm a big God guy, big faith guy. There was one little line that I learned in a prayer book. It just said, appreciate the toil of the car. I knew that I had to appreciate this ride. I had no idea I'd get to where I am. No clue. I'll never, ever, ever let that get lost on me. Started two charities, one for children and called Touchdown Dreams and one for, uh, for our veterans. And I'm not trying to sound cliche or hokey or corny. It's really not. I'm, I feel so blessed every single, single second of my life. So I will always have the two full-time jobs of my career and taking care of everybody else as much as I can. No matter what, no matter what happens, ever in my life, I know that I will be the last man standing. I will never, ever, ever tap out. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed my seven bucks moment. I appreciate it. Please make sure you subscribe. I have got to have more likes, subscriptions, comments than Dwayne. I have to. You gotta make it happen. Please. I don't even know who that guy is.